Hello and welcome to another episode of the Why We Travel podcast. Today we want to revisit the topic of digital nomad lifestyle. So we want to find out how it is to be on the road as a small business owner, how to live and work, and probably also to school your kids while being on the road, and give you some ideas and tips from someone who has done this for many, many years. So for that, joining me on the show is AB. She is a well-seasoned hospitality professional with more than 20 years of luxury travel and hospitality experience. She has worked across the United States, Southeast Asia, building up a knowledge in hospitality and culinary. So I want to dive into that right now, and I want to welcome her to the show. Hi, Abby. How are you today? I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Abby, first question, as always, is what is your first childhood experience when it comes to being a traveler? Oh, really? That is that is my ideal question. Thank you. I owe my passion and the travel bug to my grandmother. Um, she took me to Europe when I was seven years old and we went to Germany and Amsterdam. And, um, I absolutely, the second I got back to the United States, I could not wait to graduate high school and, and it just showed me how big the world was. So I owe everything to her. I remember so much of that trip. I like, it was yesterday, the smells, the, the experiences, the food, the places we went being cold. I remember so much of that. And I have no doubt that that's what set the tone in me. I can't, uh, I can't stress that enough. I owe that to my grandmother very much. So. Mm -hmm. Now it's always good to, to catch, um, the, the travel bug early in life it was the same with me. And, um, once it's, it's stuck with you, it, it will never leave you. So you said Agreed. after you finished school, you started traveling. What was your plan there? How did you get started with traveling? Sure. I lived in a very small town um, and I didn't have the opportunity to travel outside of the United States until I graduated high school. But I did um, travel within the United States, which is amazing in itself. And so I had visited Colorado. I grew up in Texas. I visited Colorado And um, I knew that I eventually wanted to end up here, which is where I am at this moment, it's kind of our home base. And so after high school, I um, traveled around. I spent, started college in Florida. I have family there. And then with the goal of getting to Colorado. So I eventually ended up in Colorado, graduated high school, um, and then graduated college, and then went to culinary school. And then uh, through culinary school, after I finished up in the States, I was able to go to um, South of France and Northern Italy and study there. And then I just stayed over there a little bit after I finished school and traveled on my own, which was amazing. Um, and so since then, since college, really, I've been all, all, all over the world. Southeast Asia is one of my favorite places. You mentioned you're headed there. So that I hope that I'm able to spend an extended period of time. That would be next on my list for sure. Mm -hmm. Now coming to being a digital nomad, being a small business owner and being on the road, what was your learning curve there? What kind of challenges did you have when you got started having a lifestyle that is not just a holiday, but it's really like a work style? Exactly. And I think it's important that you stress that it's different when you're living the lifestyle as opposed to being a visitor. Um, people think it can be, oh, you know, glamorous, you're traveling. And and yes, it is, you, but you're you're still having to work and, and balance that and not go out every night. Um, it is important. And that's part of what my passion is, is being immersive. You know, it's, you're not going out every night. You are going to the market and you're meeting people uh, at your restaurants and the bars or who you who you pass when you're walking your dog during the day. So it is a little bit different than when you're going on vacation and you want the highest, um, you're the most trendiest restaurant or, you know, checking things off a list necessarily. So I think... Um, As far as a learning cur curve goes, I have a little bit of an advantage. My husband started his company 20 year, over 20 years ago. It's a branding and marketing company, and he has always worked remotely, um, and we've always had a home office. So when the pandemic hit, um, we really, it was not that big of a deal for us. I joined him about six years before the pandemic actually. So we as a family had been working remotely for a while, um, but kind of on the down low, people at that time 
you know, back then before the pandemic, people didn't realize how productive you could be. So, right. um, which was a shame. And again, it's not for everyone for sure, but, um, our personality types and the type of work that we do, we just found it was something that we gravitated to and gave us the opportunity to work abroad. So the pandemic, we were like, this is great. Everyone else can see. And, and it opened up a lot of opportunities for our son as well. I think mm -hmm. that the education reform that's came from the pandemic has really been, our son's a teenager. And I, I, I imagine it's so different for younger children. I can't imagine. We're fortunate our son is a teenager and he lives with us. So he's always been a traveler. And right as he was starting to struggle with brick and mortar school, we had the opportunity to join a private online international program. And that has just been amazing for us as a family, because when you do something like this, you do have to buy in. Everyone has to buy in. And we made sure that everyone was in agreement with what we were going to do. Um and no regrets whatsoever. So I think as long as you have strong Wi-Fi and, um, you know, you're not afraid to put yourself out there and ask questions, um, anything's possible. Anything's possible, Klaus. I mean, totally it's amazing agree, yeah. how strong <laughs> digital, our, our fiber optic, I, we live part-time in Riviera Maya and Quintana Roo, and the fiber optic in the jungle is amazing. It goes out all the time in the States, but in in the jungle, it's we, make, <laughs> we joke about that, how great our fiber optic is in the jungle. <laughs> It's actually, yeah, that's the same experience I have. Um, really? I'm obviously, I'm German, so I will go to Germany next week. And I have been to, I don't know, 65 countries. And Germany, for me, is the worst country to work from because the internet infrastructure is not on par. So I have been to many third world countries and developing countries where the internet connection is far better than what I can expect in Germany. So it shouldn't stop you from, from traveling. You will find your Wi-Fi. On that, what kind of strategies do you have when you arrive at a new place for settling in and to get up and running? Um, exactly. I think that that falls in line with opening your mouth and asking questions. Um, a good cup of coffee. I'm I'm you know, I'm all about finding a nice cafe um and introducing yourself or going to the local market. Um you know, language can be an issue. We, I speak mm -hmm. some Spanish um, and some culinary French and Italian. So enough to get by, enough to put yourself out there um, so that you do make yourself a little bit vulnerable. I think that's very important. People I found are just so accommodating when you do make yourself vulnerable, put yourself out there, ask questions, show some interest. People are proud of where they live. Um, and often want to share that, especially if they know that you're going to be there a while. Um, it's amazing. Um, the world, mm -hmm. um, the world is a kind place. Um, we have to remember that sometimes. <laughs> no, absolutely. I think a lot of people who are um, dealing with the idea of being a traveler, they're sort of overthink the process. Um, um yeah. it's just, just go and, and get started. And that's, um, once you arrive somewhere, you will find a way and you make a plan. And I agree with you that um, once you settle down at a place longer than two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, people will see you in a different light, means locals. So that brings me to immersive travel. What's your take on being part of a community, even if it's only for a couple of months? And uh, what's your kind of approach when it comes to, I don't know, supporting local businesses and so on? Exactly. Well, I think well, you, as you mentioned, I, I think just being open to what's in front of you. I mean, obviously you're going to have an end point, an A and a B, but what happens in between there, um, you kind of detach yourself from any ideals you might have. You know, you're going to leave in two months, but you know, when you put yourself out there, is there a festival happening? Is there, is there something you can volunteer with at the school? Um, you know, one of the things that I've learned and I like to do the most class is when I'm going to be somewhere a long time, I ask the locals once they get to know me, what's something that you wish, what's three things you wish people knew before they come. Um, and then I ask people that go friends that I've recommended places, what's three things you wish you knew before you went. And I think that reciprocal, um, conversation is very important 
especially if you're going to be there extended period of time, people get, you know, locked in their head or they read too much Lonely Planet or, you know, if, if you if you put yourself out there and you're open, um, what happens between A and B can be amazing. Um, but you have to um, you have to use your words. You have to you have to talk to people. Um, and that's the best way when the, the way we ended up in Quintana Roo, there was an art festival going on. Um, mm -hmm. Muralists from all around the world came to this tiny little village and painted the town. And this was during the pandemic. And so they ended up host, hosting it anyway. Everything had just opened up, but it was very mm -hmm. small. They didn't have a big turnout. And so many people, we were living there. We quarantined there for 10 months. And so many, yeah, it was amazing. We were outside the whole time. Um, people were visiting because the, the world had just opened up and they didn't know about the art festival. They just stumbled on it. And I can't tell you how many times a day, like I eventually, my I started a little tiny Instagram account because I was so tired of for day after day telling people about the art festival. So I created a little um, Instagram account so I could share information but people were just really engaged and it got them to the Pueblo, which was not the touristy area of town. And I saw people again later during their trip and they were so grateful. Um, and again, not for everyone. Immersive means something different for everyone. Some people want to go and have room service and sit by the pool. And I love that too. Um, that's kind of how balanced travel came about. My background is mm -hmm. more luxury. And when we were brainstorming names, luxury can kind of put people off, but that can mean something different. Maybe it's just great Wi-Fi and a hot a hot shower um, in a hostel, even. Right. Like, who cares? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's, sometimes it's room service. And so balanced travel kind of came out of that. What's another word for luxury that encompasses all of that? You know, because I have room for all of that in my life um, when I travel when we live long um, extended period of time in places, obviously that's not the case. You know, you you budget and you know, you do that. It's not it's not easy, but it's definitely not as hard as people think it is when you consider especially how much it costs to live in the States right now. Um yeah, totally. Yeah. No, I, I I agree. I think balanced travel is, is, is a good name for it. Um, because every journey, uh, you might not just stay at one place, you might go from one place to another. And then from time to time you splurge on a better accommodation, on a nice right. hotel, on a spa or whatever it is, what makes you happy. And the other time you just roughen it up and stay in a hostel. So and that's all kind of the experience of being a traveler. So I always say it's the good, the bad and the ugly. And that's in exactly. any place. Sometimes things just go not completely right. But that's also that makes usually that makes the best stories. My, exactly. That's my experience. Yes. So so tell me a little bit more about um, your your blog and your Instagram account. What can sure. people find there? Sure. So um, my Instagram, it, um, we started that as a way to build community. Um, it's small right now. We're just starting most of the people I've personally invited. I have a, a great group of, of mentors and friends that I've established over the past 20 plus years all over the world. And I kind of use them as resources for some of my blogs, as well as questions people may pose me. Um, on the Instagram account. So I'm looking to build the community there where we can share things. You know, there's events and like I mentioned that art festival, not a lot of, you know, you're not going to read about that. You know, you have to know people. So I'm hoping people will join the Instagram account as well as visit my it, website and look at my and read my blogs. I know blogs aren't for everyone, but they're I think I'm biased. They're great blogs. I'm open to ideas. I love interviewing interesting people, um, but really throw out those ideas. You know, if you're going somewhere or there's a festival in Germany you want to share, you know, tag me in it. Or maybe maybe I'm coming to Germany and I reach out and ask balanced travel, you know, what's going on that week? You know, that's the way I hope that we can communicate and kind of share and promote these small businesses um, within a community to make it a more immersive experience on a short term. You know, it's not everyone has the luxury as you and I to go stay months on end or even weeks. So, um, you know, if I want to stay, if I'm only staying five or 10 days, uh, maybe I do want to get out of my resort and go see what's going on. You know, start small, just put yourself out there. Um, so I'm hoping that the, the, 
community will grow organically on my website and then, uh, or I'm sorry, on the Instagram account and then drive people to my blogs. Um, we also have, my husband's an artist. He'll, he does a lot. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty proud of my blog or my website. Um, we also have a lot of travel prints and or um, travel artwork that we're selling in a shop that's just stuff that we've captured and created over the past few mm -hmm. years so it's a bit of a passion project for for me something that I'm hoping an homage to my grandmother that I can you know you don't go into blogging to become rich and famous but I'm hoping I can support my travel habit and um, homage to my grandmother throughout the next exactly. few years <laughs> right. So we became full circle 365 or 360 degrees around there. So yeah. what kind of advice would you give a someone who wants to start this kind of balanced travel lifestyle? Um, obviously, reaching out to you and other travelers to get some Absolutely. ideas. What kind of other homework would you recommend for someone to get started? I think it's important, obviously, that you visited there and talk to people that have lived there. Those are kind of obvious things. Um, but as well as, I mean, sorry, someone emergency went through, I apologize. Um, <laughs> I hope everything's okay. Um, my son's the only one that goes through. I'm sorry, let me look at that. I'm sure. Okay. Get that, get he's not here and that makes me nervous. Okay. Okay. Everything's okay. Um, okay. okay. So obviously you want to talk to people that have been there um, as well as hopefully visit there yourself. Mm -hmm. But I think if you have the luxury to spend an expended, extended period of time there and talk to people within the community, that's very important. Mm -hmm. um, I'm fortunate that my during the pandemic, my husband and my son trusted me. They had, Neither one of them had been to Quintana Roo they really trusted me um and i said it's getting cold in colorado and <laughs> and it was 10 months before we came back to the states um okay. we, went to, we went to other places as well but um um i think also um it's important to make sure that you can that you can um continue your work like what's your you know what's your work lifestyle going to be you know mm -hmm. how are you going to organize that how can you downsize that's one of the biggest things since I've been back I can't believe how much stuff I have for <laughs> absolutely no reason I like I want to just get rid of everything I own um, mainly because there's not a need for so much of it um, I thought I was a minimalist till I started traveling more and then I realized <laughs> Um, but I think you need to realize how much you can and cannot live with what little luxuries, um, what little luxuries such as, you know, hot water, good Wi-Fi or ice, you know, <laughs> um, if you're from the States, ice is, you know, <laughs> could be important. Um, but all those little, little amenities, things that you kind of take for granted, depending on where you're going to go. Um, I think it's important that you consider your day-to-day -day lifestyle if you're going right. to be somewhere for more than a couple of weeks um, and not be so set in your ways where you try to take your lifestyle somewhere. Be open to where mm -hmm. you're going. There's a reason they do the way things the way they do there. So don't try and force your lifestyle on to where you're going. Be open to that. Again, the differences between A and B can should be unlimited. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. Um, just be open-minded, um, learn about new cultures, don't take your culture with you and uh, you will have the greatest experience. Where can people find out more about you? Yes. So our Instagram is Insta Balance Travel. Mm -hmm. And then my website is balancetravel.com. And you can reach me on either of those. Pose me questions. Please read my blogs. Um, and check out my um, artwork as well. Um, I would love people to follow our Instagram account and uh, be a part of the community. Um, that would just, um, yeah, we're just, we're slowly growing. I would put a link, I will put the links in the show notes and you will be just Great. one click away and I hope a lot of our listeners will follow you Great. and get in contact. I have an you. article on there called Act Like a Local. So that's a great place for that's people a good start. to start great place for people to start and then please post questions to me i'm happy uh, several people have reached out and i've you know everyone's on a different 
level. And so I'm happy to have one-on-one -on -one conversations or pose something to the group. I'm happy to ask my people, um, just, you know, Excellent. don't, don't be afraid to put yourself out there. Klaus. <laughs> Cool. Okay. Thanks so much for your time, AV. Today it was a really good overview of how you got into traveling and what you need to look for when you want to get started with it. And I hope a lot of listeners will reach out to you. Thanks so much Thank for you. your time today. Thank you. Enjoy your day. Travel safe. Be well. <laughs>